Welcome to Financial Plan and Explained. I'm your host, Mike Menninger, certified financial planner, owner and founder of Menninger and Associates Financial Planning. Um, uh, having such a great time here uh, on our third episode with Marty Greenbaum. Uh, Marty is an expert in helping people with uh, buying franchises. Um, and we talked a lot in the first couple episodes, you know, what is a franchise? What's the advantage of a franchise? The good, the bad, the ugly, uh, examples of franchises, how they work, what they do, uh, things to look at, you know, what do you do for your due diligence? And so now we went through all of this, you know, I decided, hey man, you know, this is great. This is a wonderful idea. I've identified a particular franchise and I've done my due diligence. It looks like it's going to be good. How do I buy it, Marty? What do we do now? We've, we've identified it. Now what? Well, let me share with you a little bit, you know, when people go through this franchising process, you know, let me first say this. It's a scary process for most, right? It's a scary process. You know, most people never looked into a business, never looked into franchising. So, you know, listen, as you go through your due diligence and, you know, once you start your connection with the franchise, they have various steps that they're going to walk you through. You're going to get an intro. You're going to learn about your, the, how the business makes money, how it operates, you know, how, what's the value? What do they provide? What's their services? What are they priced at? What, why are they priced that way? They go through their technology, their support, how they're going to train you and so on. So there's this process that people are, people are going to get, you're going to get educated. In every aspect of that business, you're going to talk to franchisees. You're going to review what they call a franchise disclosure document. You're going to go really through this process where you're learning about the franchise company and they're learning about you. And we talked in our last episode quite a bit on, you know, do they just award a franchise to anybody? And could you just buy a franchise? The answer is, you know, no. Right. So as they're making sure that you're meeting their requirements, you're also asking the right questions and making sure that you're checking off the boxes you need checked off. You know, listen, you make a decision when you feel comfortable that all those check boxes are checked off and you're like to that point where, OK, I get the business. Uh, I understand the investment in time in the investment in money. I could do that. All right. And I'm excited. Right. So people make decisions a couple of ways. Right. They make it emotionally and intellectually. So let's start with intellect. If I'm going to make a decision, like I said, I want to know the numbers. I want to know that this thing's profitable. I want to talk to franchisees, and make sure that, you know, the people that I talk to, they're doing well, that they like being in this business, that they've been successful. All right. But the other side of it is I'm going to picture myself in that business. Like most people, wouldn't you say like they want to be able to say, yes, um, I'm going to get up every day and say, man, I'm excited about this. I'm, ex I'm excited to be in the, I'm excited to have a change in the, in the opportunity. So there's that emotional side where people have to satisfy that to some degree. And then of course, the intellectual side in all of us where we're saying, hey, does it check off all the boxes, all right? So those are some key things to think about, you know, when you're making your decision and the franchise is gonna educate you along the way and ultimately you're gonna have to come to that decision. Of course. And of it could course. be one way or the other, you know? Well, so now we decided, all right, you know what? It's a go, okay? Uh, I, love the, I love this franchise, I think it's awesome. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play out one in my head of the one that they looked at us for the investing. So now, because I understand a little bit about it. And, you know, until I really spoke with you, I had no idea really much at all on how franchises worked and a lot of the inners and stuff like that. And I've, now that I think about it, I've got a client who owns three large restaurants in New Jersey all of them are doing extraordinarily well. And I think he's looking at potentially buying a fourth one that is existing. And he has just done, just knocked the cover off the ball. But the fact is, is that I know how much work and I know how much uh, 
fear went into it as far as, you know, you're buying a building, you're, do, you know, it's, there's always fear attached to coming up with a lot of money. But he's done it, he's very successful, and he's making a pot ton of money, which is great, and I'm happy for him. But now, continue on. I mean, what, so, so now I'm going to buy it. I don't have $500,000, Marty, what do I do now? Are banks going to lend it to me? Is the franchisor going to lend it to me? Who lends me the money? Well, let me touch on something because I love what you said and you brought up fear, okay? So I like to, you know, listen, I've worked with hundreds of people helping them into franchises and the fact is fear, it's so funny how that works. I mean, your mind makes up things along the way and saying, geez, maybe I shouldn't do this. Uh, listen, you got to go into it smart, right? You have to do your due diligence. But at some point, sometimes you have to take a little bit of a leap of faith, I've right? Agreed. And, it, and if this franchise has 400, 500 franchisees and they have a certain like average unit revenue, they're doing X, it could be a million, it could be whatever. And they have an average profitability and you could look at yourself and saying, listen, what do those 400 people have that I don't have? You know, at some point you gotta be able to say, and you talk to other franchise owners, at some point you have to say, okay, I'm not gonna let fear get in the way of this because logically it pens out, okay? Right. So that's one thing, but you know, talking about how to uh, like um, finance a franchise is what I'm hearing. So the, the fact is, is that, you know, there's a number of ways people buy franchises and there's really two big ways they finance or they pay for them. But, so they either self-fund it or they borrow money, right? So that's easy enough. But, you know, if you self-fund it, some people don't realize that um, first of all, some people go in with cash, okay? Very rarely will they, you know, pay the whole, you know, pay the whole, well, you pay a franchise fee to the franchisor, but then you may have to do a build out and pay contractors and do the other things. So if the investment's four or $500,000, then yeah, that's a lot of money to pay cash with. And maybe not the smartest thing to do with your cash, right? right. Now, here's, here's something that a lot of people do that you'd be amazed. You have the ability to take your 401k, there's what they call a 401k rollover. So yeah. if you have money in the 401k, you could roll it over into a business and not have penalties, not see the penalties. Because instead of, just think about this, instead of using your 401k to invest like in the stock market, you just invest in yourself in a business. So it's it's funny. It's it's a really big way. It's very, very common. There's some great companies in franchising. Uh, offering that where they help you, you know, develop that 401k rollover. You have to, you know, you have to start a new corporation. You have to do some, they, they do it legally and, it, and it's a very well-known way to finance a franchise. That's, so that's actually one way interesting. To do it. Marty, I bring that up because of the fact that that is where most people have the bulk of their money with the exception of people who may be independently wealthy or inherited a large amount of assets, that is actually where most people have the bulk of their money, which now raises the question, which might be over, I don't wanna say over your head and everything else, but if I invested $500,000 in my 401k into this franchise, and this franchise is now growing to $2 million, here's the piece that I don't like. That whole entire, by the way, this has nothing to do with franchising, I'm just complaining from understanding taxes. Because my 500 just grew to $2 million, and now all of a sudden, all of that money becomes a taxable asset on the back end. Just say it. That's a separate issue. But that is actually a very, very important facet that if people can use their 401ks for this. Well, a lot of people aren't using, like they're not going to fund the whole business. Most of them will fund, you know, a portion of the business. Like you could get an SBA loan for typically... 80% of the business. Okay. So you may you may use your 401k and take out, you know, $100,000 and put that down and then finance the rest through an SBA loan, all right? So that's more common. Like they'll take out the, what what the, you know, typical cash infusion, you know, the 20% to and maybe they'll take a little bit more, maybe they take a, you know, a little cushion and then they finance the finance the business but you know that's probably more common where they're not going to take 
five hundred thousand dollars out of their four hundred one k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they're willing to take a hundred, right? No, that's actually pretty good because of the fact that you know I wouldn't want my five hundred to grow to two million and then have to pay taxes on two million. I would want to right. do that a different way, and it's above the scope of this show. But you know that that is actually a very very uh, important component of that that I did not know that you could do that. Um, that opens the door for a lot of people because, you know, if I'm 39 years old, right? I look 39, don't I, Marty? Definitely. So if Definitely. I'm 39 years old. day over. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if the bulk of my assets are tied into my 401k and I wanted to do a business and I don't have the $100,000 to put down, but I do have 100,000 in my 401k, this gives me the ability to do it. And that is right. a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful yeah, you thing. You could also use uh, home equity. Some people do HELOCs. Yeah, right? some familiar. That's, obviously that's that. a possibility too. Um, there's also term loans, but you know, if you need that cash infusion, you either you know, if you have stocks outside of your 401k, you can liquidate those. Sure. Or you could do the 401k route. You know, so it really is going to be. But keep in mind this: not every franchise costs four hundred thousand. There's a lot of franchises in the range of a hundred to two hundred thousand. Right. And just because it's a service franchise, it doesn't mean that you can't grow a million dollar business. So it's amazing what's available, like with service franchises. So maybe you only need fifty grand. So give, give me an example. You know, I want to make sure they understand that. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think of service franchises, but I think you threw a couple of them, like a home nursing type thing. Uh, well, there's the home care, but think about it. Any home services, like there's home improvement franchises, like closet remodeling, garage remodeling, painting, oh, right? Yeah, all Kitchen right. remodeling. Okay. There's repair franchises, like yep. everything from plumbing, electrical, but also you could get into the installation business. Okay. There's restoration franchises. They help, you know, if there's a flood or, you know, there's, there's um, the trash, trash removal, like what, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, the junk business, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a great business model. Well, I mean, we so have there's one. so many different franchises out there and, and service is strong and they're lower investments and, you know, so. No, that's every, uh, interesting because, you know, this even now ties into the whole franchise fee or more so the royalties because there's one where a place called Len the Plumber, okay? Great for Len, he's getting some, but I see TV ads for it. And I would imagine that if there's a TV ad for that particular one, and I've seen a couple trucks around, not a lot of them, but I've seen a couple of them around, um, I didn't realize that that could be the type of service thing. So as it pertains to me, if I am the buyer and I'm a plumber and I say, hey, you know what? I want to be able to leverage instead of doing my own marketing here's an opportunity for me to leverage that particular franchise to do my marketing for me they're on tv they do all that i i didn't even think of it from that perspective so if i'm a plumber i have to imagine and correct me if i'm wrong my um purchase cost would probably be the franchise fee plus my buying the truck or the equipment Right. right, right. You would be. And but I'll tell you, talking about the marketing on service companies and fran in franchising, it's amazing what they do. And they could out typically outperform the independents. It's it's amazing what they do. And for some franchises, they handle all of the marketing. You pay because let's and they have call centers, right? So it's just amazing what they do and the business you could generate. You know, when you have this marketing engine behind you. Uh, you know, you reference call center with the, with the plumbing contractor. Fact of the matter is, if I'm the plumbing contractor and it's just me and I'm out on a job and the phone rings, I can't be stopping what I'm doing. Okay. I don't want to blow off the call because guess what? If that person doesn't get a hold of me, they're going to pick up the phone and call the next plumber because the odds are they got a problem and they want it done now if at least they get a hold of a live voice, then that live voice could say, all right, I'll have somebody get back to you, whatever. They may be able to answer the question. I could, boy, I could tell you. And then a whole lot cheaper than me hiring someone or an answering service or whatever. As, there again lies another example 
of a value add of what you're paying for your franchise free fee. Right. So that's good. That funding with the 401k is really interesting. Now, IRA also, right? Yeah, it has to be, because if I'm not working for the company anymore, then I have to roll my 401k to an IRA. I guess it still works the same way, correct? I believe so. I believe right. so. I, I, I Listen, really I, here's what I do. I have some great funding experts. So when I'm working with clients, it's just like the same, you know, certain things that you just want people in the right hands. So in franchising, there's some great companies, and, and I have some experts, you know, both on funding and legal. Like right. if somebody is really you want to understand what's possible i'm going to say hey listen i've got some great people pick from one of these i want you to have some discussions i want you to know what's possible right so you're in a comfort zone before you get into this well right? not to mention you know it's it's stay in your lane um you know exactly. you may be an expert at certain things i mean we run into that all the time ourselves you know, we know a lot about estate planning, but we're not going to do the estate planning documents. We know a lot about tax planning, but we're not going to get into the weeds with taxes. So, um, Marty, we're at break already. Uh, what we're going to do on the next time is I want to learn for the benefit of the viewers exactly what you do to assist, how you get paid, all that. We're going to spend the last segment on that. Uh, until then, uh, we'll be back in just a few moments. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you keep up regularly with your investments? Where exactly are your hard-earned dollars going? Are you financially prepared for an emergency? I'm Mike Manager, founder of Manager & Associates Financial Planning. We believe that education and knowledge are powerful, and we want our clients to understand why we are making the recommendations that we make. It's your money, and you deserve to know where it's going, because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. So call us today to discuss your financial concerns. Welcome back to Financial Plan and Explained with your host, Mike Menninger. And I'm here still with uh, Marty Greenbaum for the last of three episodes on franchising, which have been absolutely just very informative, uh, super cool. I love the idea of franchises, honestly. Um, it has to be for the right person. They have to do their due diligence, but I could certainly see the advantages. But most importantly, Marty, just and, and I knew this just in talking to you, you know a whole lot more than, you've forgotten more than I have ever known. And I could say the same. And as with any consultant out there, I personally believe that consultants are worth their weight in gold. So um, tell me as a consultant, what do you do? I sent someone over to you who was looking already to buy a franchise that was already in place. But somebody who's thinking about buying a franchise, they're interested. What do you do, Marty? Mike, listen, I, uh, first of all, I want to make sure everybody understands that I, I don't sell franchises, okay? I, um, I'm, I'm more of an educator, a consultant, and a matchmaker. So I don't like to pressure people. I'm not here to sell somebody a franchise. You know, if you go online and reach out to franchises, franchise companies on your own, you're going to be you're reaching a salesman and they're going to sell you and you're going to get a million calls. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So the, the fact is what I do is I, I'm more of uh, the matchmakers. So I do a couple of things. I'm, first of all, I want to make sure people go into this eyes wide open. So I educate people. Second of all, um, like I said, I'm a matchmaker. So I help them identify what franchises could be the right fit for them, right? And that's key because most people, they don't even understand what's out there. For most people, they, um, you know, they've looked online, they've experienced certain franchises as a customer. They have, a, you know, certain things in their mind. Are those great franchises? Are they not? They don't know. They're, they don't have any means to judge a franchise company because they they've just never done it before right right so you know getting into a franchise is something you have to be very careful about <clears throat> and the fact is is most people that have never done it before they're not going to do it right and that's how people get sold a franchise right you don't know what you don't know and you know i can already tell that you've done a lot so um and and i have to imagine a lot of times 
people come to you and say, hey, Marty, here's a particular franchise I'm looking to buy, help me. And you may help them or you may sh help them shy away or direct them to a new one. What do you find most, most of your clients that come to you? Most of them never, they, they never thought about franchising in the past, but you know, they've been in their jobs. Um, they've, uh, they're not quite happy. Maybe they were let go and they're at the point in their career where, you know, they're afraid if they go find another job, it could end in a couple of years. So they come and they say, okay, well, we don't know anything about franchising. Help us understand if this is something smart to do. And if so, like, what would be a good fit for us? So, right. um, so, so I walk them through a process, Mike, I have a very thorough process to get them from the point of, you know, not knowing anything to let's come up and have a few discussions and get to the point where I could come back and make some really solid recommendations based on everything I learned. Well, I have to imagine that you're probably put in a tough position at times where you have somebody that you would just flat out look at and say, I don't recommend you buy a franchise. Do you run into that much at all? I've done that. I've, I've done that. I've had some clients that just didn't have the aptitude, to be honest. Uh, that's what you. I mean by that. You wanted know to do everything your own way. I've right. actually had some clients that the franchise companies come back and say, we don't want them. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, you know, and some people, they, 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 they come with the hopes of getting into a franchise, but they're not quite there yet financially, too. I get some of those. Mm -hmm. So, and it's hard, you know, you have to, what I always do with those people, I say, listen, you're not quite there yet, but let me share with you. This is like, it's great that you're thinking that, but you know, this is how we get you there. So here's the roadmap to get to a point where you're going to have, you know, where it's not going to be such a big risk for you. Because if, if they're on the line, I'd rather say no to that person. Hey, it's too big of a risk for you. Or hey, be realistic. You don't have the time. If you're not like some people, they many are looking for a semi-absentee franchise, and I have to tell them, listen, you know, based on what you shared with me with your available time, um, I don't think that you know this may be right for you. And I want you to go in very, like I said, eyes wide open, be, be realistic about what you could do and what it's going to take. Well, effectively, someone is becoming a business owner. And as a business owner, you can spend as little or as much time in your business as you'd like. But people are exploring to become a business owner. And by buying into a franchise, they've climbed a lot of the you know, they let someone else deal with all of the climbing the learning curve problems that any new business owner will have, and they can provide that training. So, you know, being a business owner, uh, knowing I am one, okay, that there's a lot to be said about being a business owner. A lot of people like that opportunity. There's a sense of freedom. There's a sense of, I am the boss. Um, however, the other thing that I will also tell you as business owners that a lot of people don't appreciate is you're the business owner. The buck stops here. So you're taking on a lot of responsibility. So don't underestimate, and this is my recommendation, don't underestimate what you're getting into, but just the concept of doing it. Do you counsel them in that regard as far as, hey, are you ready to be a business owner? Do you counsel them in that regard? Listen, I'm very frank with them. Okay. I tell them I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to give it to you straight. And that's what I do. You know, we talk about their finances. We talk about their time. We talk about their fears. We talk about whatever's going to get in the way of them realizing their goals. Franchising offers a great opportunity, but it's not for everybody. Okay. So I'm very careful that they understand you know, these things and what it's going to take. And, you know, sometimes they have family members. Do I bring my kid into this is, you know, and I want to make sure that this isn't something that your kid's going to get into for a year and then decide he wants to go off and do something else. And then you're stuck with the business, right? So, I mean, 
that you got to be careful, but I'm that guy, you know, I'm not here to sell anybody a, fran a franchise, like right. I said, and I'm not pressuring people. So, um, yeah, I totally make sure that they know what they're getting into. That's kind of my job. How do you get paid? Good question. Guess what? They don't pay me anything. They don't sign any You're contracts. Hired. My clients. You're hired. If we, <laughs> huh? You're hired. I like it. Free consulting. I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> but uh, but not cheap. I'm free. But uh, the fact is, that it's kind of like real estate, right? If you use a real estate agent, you buy a home, you don't pay the agent fees. The seller does, right? So if we find a franchise that you decide after doing all the right due diligence and everything we've talked about in these segments, and you decide to move forward, then I receive a referral commission from the franchise companies that oh. does not affect what you pay. So listen, I'm here to help. I'm going to give it to you straight. I'll definitely help you to you know learn. And um, yeah, I mean, that's what I do. And I work with many clients that decide Hey, you know what? Not for me. I just had that two days ago. The guy went through three, four months of all this due diligence. It was at the time to sign and he just, I guess, couldn't do it. And I was like, you know, I, I you know, I said, okay, uh, you know, it's your call, buddy. I mean, I wrote him an email and said, oh, heard that, you know, heard that you decided not against it. If you, you know, want to have a discussion, you want to look at other things, I'm happy to talk to you but I'm not here, you know, so I didn't, you know, people are going to make the decision based on their situation. And I respect that. Yeah. Well, it's a true um, I'd rather they don't do it. That's a true if, example if, of COVID. If it's going to be something that's going to be a hardship for them. No. This should be something that you do because, you know, you're confident and you want to build something. Well, Marty, I am pulling a guess out of thin air that is probably a very accurate guess that you have way, way more success stories than you have stories of people who buy and fail or buy or chicken out at the last minute like you just happen to have. <laughs> I do, I do. And I've had, I've had definitely some amazing success stories and I really, I haven't heard of anybody, nobody's come back to me and said, hey, this didn't work out, we're out of business. I've not had that in five years, right, all right since I've started doing this. so. You know, I, I cross my fingers and I always I'm here and I say to my clients, listen, I've been a marketing strategist my whole life and you're going into business. And I know a lot about business. So even though, you you know, you're going to have all this support from the franchisor, I'm definitely here to help you. Feel free to reach back out to me. I'm going to, you know, I'll help you out in any way I can. And, you know, I, 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 I love to have long term relationships with my clients. Well, do your do your clients keep in touch with you after they purchase the franchise? Yeah, a portion of them, you know, many of them. And then what know, happens if they want? We're all busy, you know, but definitely, a, you know, a portion of them do. I had a guy I just heard from, he started with one location with a brand called Team Logic. They do IT uh, for small and medium-sized businesses. And he was franchisee of the year. And then he, he now owns three uh, locations, three markets. So, um, just there's some amazing success stories out there. So when he picked up those other two, did he go through you or did he go directly to the franchise or? Oh, he went directly to them. Okay. He went directly to them. Okay. Well, Marty, this has been absolutely fantastic. What I'd like to do is put up the slide that shows, uh, take a moment if you could, and just, you know, speak to the camera and tell people how, about yourself, how they can contact you. What's the best way to reach you? Oh, it's pretty easy. Listen, please. Feel free to reach out to me, you know, at Marty at smartfranchiseinvesting.com. That's my email. My website is smartfranchiseinvesting.com. Okay. And you can email me at Marty at smartfranchiseinvesting. We could set up a time and, you know, have a 10, 15 minute chat and see if, uh, you know, this is something for you. Great. Th Marty, thank you very much. I tell you, you know, uh, spoke to you on the phone twice. Each time was one of the faster hours that I've ever experienced. Uh, you're very knowledgeable. You're very upfront, uh, honest, uh, much like myself, almost to a fault, and you know, very straightforward. And you know, I, I would, and I've already done it. I've recommended someone over to you, and, and I could just see myself doing that. I really like your style. 
uh, I like who you are and I just like how you are and everything else like that. So thank you very much for joining me today, Marty, as well as each of the other previous episodes. And you know, for everyone here who are the viewers, uh, I hope that you learned something uh, today and in each of the two previous episodes. And uh, thank you for joining. It's all part of financial planning, which is part of the show, Financial Planning Explained. Uh, and I'm your host, Mike Manager, Certified Financial Planner. Thank you for joining. You have a wonderful day and a wonderful week.